in memory of Sergeant Brian K. Burgess, Weapons Company, 1st Battalion, 24th Marines, Regimental Combat Team 5, died of wounds received in action against anti-coalition forces, Al Fallujah, Al Anbar Province, Iraq. Let us pray. Lord God, we come before you this morning. We ask for your presence among us on this battlefield. And so by your grace and mercy, we pray that you'd open your arms as you welcome Sergeant Burgess home, that we may grieve, we may mourn. Today we honor our friend. May the sacrifice which was made by him bring peace to this country. We pray for his family, that you bring comfort to them. And so our only hope is in you. And so though we gather today to honor Sergeant Burgess, we ask that your spirit provide us with the comfort and the strength to continue in our mission. And in your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leaves beside me quiet pools of water. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his own sakes. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Time to be born and a time to die. Time to plant and a time to uproot. Time to kill and a time to heal. Time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. Time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Good morning, General Reist, Colonel Nicholson, fellow commanders and sergeants major, and Marines and Sailors of Weapons Company, 1st Battalion, 24th Marines. I'd like to thank you for coming this morning to Camp Barria for the memorial service to honor Sergeant Brian Burgess. Sergeant Burgess was a simple guy that enjoyed simple pleasures. He was an avid skier in the winter and loved to ride his motorcycle in the summer. If you asked his uncle, Rich Cormier, about him, he would say that Brian didn't have a malicious bone in his body and that revenge was not in his vocabulary. According to his mother, Brian held so deep a love for his country that he felt it was worth sacrificing his life for. We know that this is true because Sergeant Burgess was one of the many Marines that volunteered to deploy to Iraq with Weapons Company 124. He was another kid that didn't have to deploy to Iraq but wanted to because it was the right thing to do. As I drove away from Fallujah Surgical the afternoon that Sergeant Burgess was killed, I tried to figure out what Sergeant Burgess meant to Weapons Company and what would be the impact of his loss. I have grieved with the passing of every Marine from 124 and have tried to quantify the impact of each loss. Cold as that may seem to some, it's the reality that I face as the CO. But what I quickly realized is that the battalion had just lost a Sergeant of Marines. But what exactly is a Sergeant of Marines? The Marine Corps promotes corporals to sergeant when we can place a special trust and confidence in the Marine's fidelity and abilities to execute the duties of a sergeant. To break this down, we are talking about the two critical elements of every Marine leader, leadership and professional competence. 
First, we are placing a special trust and confidence in the Marine's faithfulness to, the, to execute his duties of a sergeant. Our expectation is that the new Marine sergeant has the integrity and commitment to do the right thing, to set the example for the Marines, for his Marines to emulate, to never task his Marines to do something that he is not willing to do himself, and the list goes on. In the end, what we are really suggesting when we place a special trust and confidence in a Marine's fidelity to execute the duties of a sergeant, we are talking about his ability to lead. Likewise, when we talk of a Marine's ability, abilities to execute the duties of a sergeant, we are talking about his professional competence. We are stating that the Marine has the technical skills first to teach his Marines what their job is, and then to supervise them in the execution of these jobs. Additionally, we are stating that that Marine has the tactical skills necessary to employ his squad properly during the execution of their assigned mission. More than just making sure that his Marines know their jobs, the Sergeant must have the ability to combine the effects of all of his Marines to meet a single mission and purpose. Sergeant Burgess was the epitome of what I am talking about. He fit the mold of a Sergeant of Marines like no other. In talking with his company commander, Major Kramer, there were few in the company that knew more about machine guns or machine gun employment than Sergeant Burgess. Additionally, I have to believe that there are few in weapons company whose passing will have as significant an impact as Sergeant Burgess's. He was a teacher, a mentor, and a leader to so many. In other words, he was a Sergeant of Marines. Before closing, I'd ask a favor that all of all that are present today. I ask that you keep Evelyn and Rex Burgess Sergeant Burgess's mother and father in your thoughts and prayers, as their sadness and loss must tower over ours. Today we mourn the loss of a leader and a friend. They mourn the loss of a son. I have no insider wisdom to pass that will make the pain incurred by the loss of Sergeant Burgess go away. I can only offer what my faith in God allows me to believe, and that is that Brian is in a better place and at peace, watching over us and helping us to accomplish our mission because that is what a Sergeant of Marines does. Rest in peace, Brian. Semper Fidelis. Sergeant Burgess, uh, how does one attempt to capture the essence uh, of a man like him in a few short words? Uh, a daunting task. Uh, I will try. Uh, my first attempt to do that will be to steal a couple words from the medical profession and knowingly not use them for the intended purpose, but I feel that they fit. Those words are infectious and contagious normally associated with disease, but uh, in Sergeant Burgess's case, I think that describes two things. One, his ability to smile and his ability 
to generate a smile on virtually everyone who observed him under some of the most trying circumstances. A, a truly, truly gifted man when it came to that. And I think each one of us has many, many memories of the smiles he brought to us and the smiles that he gave us. A man who had a natural mechanical inclination, of which I am very envious. He translated that, as the colonel indicated, into technical proficiency that, that I would dare say is unmatched by few. Many Marines can recite a cycle of operation on a machine gun. He's one of the few guys I knew that actually understood it. Again, a volunteer in the very truest sense of the word. Here because he wanted to be here, not because he had to. Here, out of an overwhelming and overpowering devotion that he felt for each of us. A devotion matched by his feelings toward his mother, his family, as a son. And as we saw him, that devotion manifested itself in his devotion to each other and to each of you and to each one of us. For the last nine days we have missed him. We'll continue to miss him tomorrow, next month, next year. And I suspect for each of the Marines and Weapons Company till the very end. His loss creates a gap in our ranks, a painful, painful gap. But I know that we will close ranks and each one of us in our own small way will chip in and play a part to close that gap. I would ask that each one of us rededicate ourselves, redevote ourselves in respect to the memory of Sergeant Burgess to one another. Dig down deep, find the extra step, use this experience for the good that which Sergeant Burgess would want us to use it and remind ourselves of our devotion to our fellow Marines. And lastly, when I suspect that we will think of Sergeant Burgess many, many, many times over the coming days and weeks, when you think of him, think of him and smile. so much to say about Sergeant Brian Burgess. I'd stand around at all deployment, talk about him, and by the end we'd barely scratch the surface. Most of you remember him as a wiry old Irishman that no matter how stressful or how hard things got, he was always standing there with a smile on his face. He'd give you the shirt off his back, the money out of his pocket, and his only, reg only regret being it couldn't be more. He'd do all these things and more just as long as you didn't touch his beer. Most of you may not know about him is that he hated 80s punk music, I'm sorry, 80s hair band music. He went to boot camp twice. He was godfather to more kids than he, even, he could keep track of. He loved the Marine Corps and he loved his Marines. Prior to deployment, we talked about the option of going or staying back. I told him I was going. He said, well, I guess I can't let you go without me. Have all the fun. Upon arriving to Camp Pendleton, we found out for the first time in five years we'd be in different platoons. We shook hands and hugged, not worrying because we know that our, despite going different paths, our paths would cross again. We were the last two Marines out of the original heavy machine gun platoon who deployed to Africa in 2003. And once again, we have to take separate paths. Only this time we have to say goodbye. Me, Burge, and a few other Marines ate chow together the night before he was taken from us. Shared laughs. Reminisce of stories. And we planned in January of 2008 to go to Australia. I still plan on making the trip though it won't be the same without him. 
Brian taught me many things. Taught me how to be a machine gunner. Though the hardest lesson he had to teach me was tact. Still don't quite have that one down. On the morning of the 9th, I was walking to Chow. And I saw Burgess on standing on top of a Humvee outside the Chow Hall. Smile on his face, cigarette in his mouth. He yelled me out, yeah baby, as only he can. Talked briefly before I went inside. On my way back out, came as no surprise. There was Brian, standing on top of the Humvee, smile on his face, cigarette in his mouth. I made a smart aleck comment about all him ever doing was standing around smoking. He probably sounded off, that's right. We exchanged a few laughs, and I told him to stay safe, and I'd see him out there. Those were the last words I got to say to him. There's no doubt we all have our fond memories of Brian. He treated everyone the way they'd want to be treated. We can all say we learned at least one hard lesson from him. Be it a lesson in gear accountability, or the harder lesson of how many Irish, Irish car bombs is enough. He would much rather us party and celebrate his life as opposed to mourn and cry for his passing. So when we all get back, make sure you have a round for our favorite little Irishman. Brian was proud of his heritage. He was proud to be an Irishman. He was proud to be a Marine doing what he loved, fighting along us all. Throughout training, we heard the term post-guardian angels it's been beaten in our heads from day one. Rest assured that on November 9th, 2006, the best guardian angel Marine Corps could offer was posted. Always smiling, forever watching our backs. It won't be the same without you, Burge. <laughs> we love and miss you. Godspeed, Semper Fidelis. Uh, Sergeant Burgess wasn't just an outstanding Marine, he was a friend. Someone who would give every ounce of strength he had. Despite how tired, or how dirty he might have been, he was always there, always with a smile. Sergeant Burgess had a very kind heart. He was a family man who loved his mother. I can't count how many hours he spent writing letters home to his mother. He'd always talk about the stuff his mother would send him in packages. She was always sending him weird stuff like pictures of leaves and trees back home, but he loved it. She sent him because it reminded him of falls in Michigan, and it was the simple things like that that made him smile. As I mentioned before, Brian had a very kind heart. Burge would go out of his way for his Marines. I don't know how many hours he spent listening to Marines' problems and offering a kind words of advice. No matter how busy he was, he always took time to help another Marine in need. Burgess was, he was an unselfish Marine. He spent 80% of his free time making sure the 50 cal was in tip top shape. While the rest of us NCOs would complain about not getting enough free time, Burge would sit down, put in an episode of House in the DVD player and spend the next four to five hours cleaning that thing, just meticulously cleaning it. It was perfect. I think he knew everything about it. Sometimes I think he even invented the 50 cal. I don't think it'd do Burgess any justice if I didn't mention the fact that he was proud to be Irish. His Irish flag, bro. So Irish Frag hung proudly above our rack and our hooch. He was the first person to introduce me to the Irish car bomb, which Sergeant Payne already mentioned. I can remember sitting in Goody's Bar in San Clemente doing Irish car bombs, one after another with him, just drinking the night away, having a good time. When I get back home, Burge, you better believe I'm having five or six Irish car bombs in your honor. In conclusion, even though Burge is gone, I don't think he'd want us to mourn his passing, but praise his memories. I could possibly say that every Marine who worked, fought, 
and drank by his side have a fond memory of him. And his smile and his undying, his undying loyalty for all of us, his fellow Marines. And no matter what lies ahead of us, I think he'd want us to stay strong and carry on the mission. That's what Burge would have wanted. That's how we best honor him. Semper Fi. Rest in peace, Burge. Marine's Prayer. Almighty Father, whose command is all over all, and whose love never fails, make me aware of thy presence and obedient to thy will. Keep me true to my best self, guarding me against dishonesty in purpose and deed, and help me to live so that I may face my fellow Marines my loved ones, and thee, without shame or fear. Protect my family. Give me the will to do the work of a Marine, and to accept the share of my responsibilities with vigor and enthusiasm. Grant me the courage to be proficient in my daily performance. Keep me loyal and faithful to my superiors and to the duties my country and the Marine Corps have entrusted in me. Make me considerate of those committed to my leadership. Help me to wear my uniform with dignity and let it remind me daily of the traditions which I must uphold. If I am inclined to doubt Steady my faith. If I am tempted, make me strong to resist. If I should miss the mark, give me the courage to try again. Guide me with the light of truth and grant me the wisdom by which I may understand the answers to my prayers. Amen. The anchors on the newest carriers that we have, the Truman, the Roosevelt, and the Bush. Each of those anchors weighs about 30 tons each. The chain of those anchors has 684 links, of which each link also weighs 365 pounds each. Imagine the, the weight of all those links and those anchors. Why do they need to be so heavy? What is the purpose of anchors on ships? The anchors provide safety to that ship. So that during storms and wind, rain, the current and the waves, they may cause a ship to beat against the shores or rocks or other ships or be pulled out by the currents. And so using those anchors or securing that ship to moorings keeps the ship from danger. How does an anchor help us in our remembrance of our friend? Let me read from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 18 and 19. We who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. And we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. What a good nautical illustration for us today. That we so often may use the word hope we tend to use it in place of the word wish. Oh, I hope I win the lottery. Or I hope it doesn't rain today. But biblical hope, the kind of hope that comes from faith in God, is about our confidence in God. When the storms of life hit, when the floodwaters rise, when the winds blow, when the problems in our families hit, when our jobs are threatened, or when a friend is killed by the enemy, hope in God will act as an anchor that will keep our faith alive. From Psalm 42, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. 
for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. The storms may continue. We will continue to see the violence in our missions as long as we are here. That is a calling that we have accepted, that we have stepped up to, that we chose to answer, much like Sergeant Burgess. We have chosen to serve our country, to go where evil exists, to stand up and protect others, and to serve alongside those around you. We serve alongside the most amazing people you will ever meet. And Sergeant Burgess was one of those people to many of you. So may we find hope in God. May we find an anchor that helps us weather the storm. May hope not fail us. May hope remind us not to fail in our mission. And hope will not fail us in our future. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this time together today. We thank you for the memories that we have of Sergeant Burgess, for his friendship, for his leadership, and for his sacrifice. And so, Father God, we pray that you would keep us safe today, that you would take care of our families back home, and that you would bring our mission here a success. Amen. Sergeant Pay! Present! Sergeant Shortridge! Present! Sergeant Burgess! Sergeant Burgess! Sergeant Brian K. Burgess!